Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to tell you five things that you need to know about Home Assistant's new multi-factor authentication system so that you can stay better protected for longer. Coming up. First of all, welcome to Hascasts. If you're new here, my name is John and my goal here at Hascasts is to help to get you into keep you up to date with and make the most of home assistant and home automation in general. So if that sounds like something that you would be interested in, then please feel free to subscribe and ring that bell if you would like to be kept up to date as to when I release a new video or when I go live. So the first thing that you need to know about Home Assistant's new multi-factor authentication system is that it isn't just about authentication. Uh, in the same release, it has included a uh, it has included the ability to create and manage multiple Home Assistant users, which is fantastic for families. Okay, on to item number two. So what is the second thing that you need to know about the multi-factor authentication system? Well, if you're gonna use it, you need to know what it is and what it is not. So the first thing, what it is, is it is a more secure way to authenticate. Now, this may sound obvious, but let's face it. Uh, if you employ multiple methods of authentication, then it stands to reason that, it's, that it is much more secure than if you just employ one method of authentication. If you are just using one method of, an, of authentication, then uh, the chances are reasonably high that somebody could uh, guess your password and get into your system. If you are uh, not using a password manager and if you are, say, using weak passwords, passwords that are easy to remember, so dates, uh, things like that, or uh, family names, all those sorts of things, they're easy to figure out using social media. Now, although this practice is to be completely discouraged, in my opinion, you can't go around blaming people for it. We have no idea what their alternative is to using password managers. Now, one thing that it isn't is it isn't an excuse to start being laxadaisical or lazy with your security details. Just because one has multi-factor authentication in place, it, isn't an excuse to get lazy with those details. If you're not careful with them, you could start getting overconfident with your security and start inadvertently dropping hints to friends, colleagues, that sort of thing, just without realizing it. And if that happens, it can only be seen as a bit of a danger sign. Now, in the military, there is a saying, loose lips sink ships. I think it began in World War II. Some of you may be thinking of a different military security saying. Security is not a dirty word. Now it's something I uh, learnt and got pounded into me numerous times while I was in the army. I think it's a bit of a paradox that the more security one has, the more secure one feels. And unfortunately, the less vigilant one is with that same security information. So you've just got to remember that no matter how many layers of security you have, you need to cheat, you need to treat each layer as if it was your only layer. Now, the last thing it is, is it is an exercise in admin. The more levels of, uh, the more methods of authentication you have, the better your admin needs to be. For example, let's say that you choose to have backup codes for all the places that you have multi-factor authentication, or as most places call it, two-factor authentication. Now, where are you gonna keep those backup codes? I found out several years ago, when I first got into multi-factor authentication, um, that quite a few places allow you to download, say, a series of 10 backup codes in case, say, you lose your phone or something like that. You can still gain access to your account. Now, to begin with, I had them here, there, and everywhere. But as the list of places that I was using multi-factor authentication grew, so did the number of pieces of paper that I had backup codes uh, printed on. So what am I gonna do with them? It's basically up to you, but uh, I just happened to store them all. Um, I just happened to store them all in a central location 
that is uh, easy for me to remember, but not quite so easy to get to. One thing you don't want to be doing is going into Google Drive for some reason, needing to log into Google with multiple methods, and then realizing that you can't find your phone. Not a problem, I will go to my backup codes. Where are my backup codes? Ah, oh, who? I store them in Google Drive. So you see what I mean, it's, uh, it's a bit of an exercise in admin. So I physically print them off, keep them somewhere safe. So the third thing that you need to know about HAMFA is you need to know why you should use it. Why would I want to use it, you ask yourself. Well, with today's social media driven society, it's so easy to pick up numerous uh, tidbits of general security information without realizing that they are bits of security information. So many of us uh, post things on social media channels, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and the rest of them. If you mix this with many companies asking, in what my opinion, are absolutely ridiculous questions for security purposes, uh, then it's a, it's a recipe for disaster. So let's take, for example, a common, um, a common security question here in the UK, I assume in the US as well, and that is, what is your mother's maiden name? Now, it's, for me, it's as if, <laughs> seriously? Are you asking me that as a security question? Anybody could go onto my Facebook page and look through previous public posts that I've had. When I started posting things privately several years ago, there was a time before that when I was posting public things. And you can guarantee that in one of those posts, I mentioned my mum uh, with a link to my mum, just in general, so that she can see the post. All they need to do click onto my mother's profile. In, I would say in general, each generation as they go back, uh, become a little less security aware. Um, so not just my mother, all people of her generation, and then the people of the next generation, my our grandparents, theirs will be a level behind. Now, if your mother's married, it will be easy to get her married name from somewhere on her profile. Um, then you just need to look back and, until a group of people wish her happy birthday. Uh, one of those will probably mention how old she is. Uh, if not, look back year on year, you will be able to figure out how old somebody is. So, so then you have their date of birth and their married name. All you need to do, at least in the UK, is go on the GRO website. I believe it's the General Registry Office. So do a search for that person under marriages and on the marriage details page will be the maiden name. Anybody with a degree in CompuServe or AOL dial-up disks and getting the ass kicked out of your internet connection will be able to do it. I'm not advocating that by the way, uh, but that is how easy it is. And if you're purposefully setting out to get this information, you will know all this anyway. Now, it doesn't matter how much somebody trolls your social media accounts. If you're using something like TOTP, that's time-based one-time passwords, they won't be able to guess that information. Uh, so that is, in my opinion, the main reason why you should use it. It narrows it down to you or somebody who has, say, your phone. The fourth thing that you need to know is things go wrong. Unfortunately, there is a downside to multi-factor authentication. When things are going well, things are awesome. However, when things go wrong, things can go wrong in a big way. Now, in Home Assistant, if it is just your password that you've forgotten, don't worry, that can be changed from the command line. However, let's say that all you have set up is your normal user profile and TOTP, and you lose your phone. Now, what you can do is you can delete these thing, and that will reset the entire authentication system in Home Assistant. Be warned though, doing this will delete all your user profiles and all the user information. 
so you will have to start the entire onboarding process again now obviously if you're a, a single bloke living in a bachelor pad uh, this doesn't really matter to you unless of course you have profiles set up for your cat then the cat might mind however in my opinion prevention is much better than the cure so if you are going to do something like uh, change your phone change contracts um, anything like that then it's very easy to disable uh, something like TOTP in Home Assistant do that and then once your phone is back working and in a stable situation then re-enable TOTP now obviously that won't work for every uh, method of authentication that there will be but you get my drift if something's going to interfere with the method of authentication that you use then temporarily delete that method of authentic authentication don't risk it uh, I would also suggest printing backup codes out now I haven't seen these in Home Assistant as yet but I am aware that there are several methods of authentication in the planning stage so some will be along soon and hopefully one of those will be backup codes so the last thing that you need to know is well what if I want to use it now can I use multi-factor authentication now John yes yes you can but at the time of this recording there are a few things to bear in mind so if you are going to enable multi-factor authentication now make sure that it isn't on any sort of critical system don't be installing it on instances of home assistant that have your entire household life planned out then again if you're the only person that uses the system if there aren't many automations and things like that and it's easy to set up uh, then by all means just back up your system uh, and start using multi-factor authentication see what you think to it if things go wrong uh, you can just start again and re reinstall your backup easy now once my internet connection is back up and running which could be another couple of weeks I'm going to be keeping a close eye on the multi-factor authentication system and the different modules that come into play and when a new module comes into play I'm going to do a video on it and I will let you all know what it's like how to use it in detail so if you want to be kept up to date then don't forget to click the subscribe button and ring the bell so that you get to know when I release my videos so at the time of this recording, the only multi-factor authentication method that is available is TOTP, as I explained, time-based, one-time passwords. Now, I'm going to do a dedicated video on that next. Uh, if it's ready, you will see a link to it at the top. Click on the bottom video, which is a video that YouTube thinks you should watch next. Thank you. Bye-bye. My son loves me. He's great.